The fourth Sunday of Easter, we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday. This year, we listen to a very short gospel reading of only four verses, yet it is strongly connected to the mysterious book of Revelation. In this program, I will explain how to properly do a liturgical reading of the readings at Mass in order to understand the true message these readings want to convey, especially today. What is the main message the Good Shepherd is giving to the Church? The fourth Sunday of Easter every year, we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday. In every liturgical cycle, A, B, and C, we read different verses from John 10. To fully understand the message the Word of God wants to convey every Sunday, we must understand the readings within their liturgical context, Easter. Different from ordinary time in which you read the Gospels in a semi-continuous fashion, and the Gospel topic of every Sunday can be independent from each other, in strong liturgical seasons like Advent, Christmas, Lent, and Easter, all Sunday Gospels of every season are carefully chosen and connected to each other. They need to be read in their specific liturgical context to get the most out of them. Every year, the first three Sundays of Easter, we read in the Gospel what happened right after the resurrection of Jesus. The fourth Sunday, we focus on the Good Shepherd, and the last three Sundays of Easter, we focus on the farewell discourses Jesus pronounces after his last supper in the Gospel according to John. This year, 2022, we are celebrating liturgical cycle C. The Gospel reading is very short, just four verses. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. To understand the liturgical theme of every reading, lectors and readers and the priest must pay attention to the title of every reading. The title is the line in red ink that precedes the pericope to be read and that is never read out loud. For lectors and readers, it is important to pay attention to the title because it hints the main idea they have to emphasize as they read. For priests, the title matters because it hints the topic they shall preach about. The title of today's gospel reads, I give my sheep eternal life. What's the message? Once more, we need to read this within the context of Easter. In Easter, we focus on the crucified Jesus, who is now risen. This is why all along Easter, we see the symbol of the crucified and resurrected Jesus par excellence in every Mass, the Paschal candle. It has a cross pierced with five nails of incense and the Alpha and the Omega, that is, the crucified Jesus, but with a burning flame at the top, which is alive. For this crucified Jesus is now risen, and we see it next to the Ambo, because the Ambo is meant to symbolize the empty sepulcher, from where the first good news of the resurrection of Jesus was proclaimed by the angels. In fact, the Ambo symbolizes the empty sepulcher always, not only during Easter. So, if we are celebrating this Sunday the Good Shepherd, we must find the connection with the crucified and risen Jesus. To understand the message of the Word of God in Mass, the readings might not be enough. We must also pay attention to the eucological texts. In this case, let's see what the Collect Prayer says, Almighty and ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. There is one noteworthy idea in this prayer, that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. The humble flock and the brave shepherd. Let's keep this in mind and continue. This year, cycle C, the second reading on Easter is always taken from the book of Revelation. In cycle A, it is taken from the first letter of Peter, and in cycle B, from the first letter of John. The pericope the Church has chosen for this fourth of Sunday of Easter talks precisely about the Good Shepherd. Looking at the last verse of this pericope, we see that the Lamb, who is in the center of the throne, will shepherd them, 
and lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. These springs of life-giving water, that is the Holy Spirit, refers to Psalm 23, the one about the Good Shepherd precisely. The book of Revelation constantly represents Jesus as the Lamb, the Paschal Lamb who was atoned, shedding his blood for our salvation. The same very copy of the book of Revelation talks about those who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. It is talking about the martyrs. Christian martyrs are important in the book of Revelation because it was written in a time of persecution by the Roman Empire, and many were being killed. Many were martyrs. So the book of Revelation treats the martyrs not as the poor victims of the injustice of the Romans, but rather as the victorious heroes who died for their faith and who can praise the Lord forever because their robes were washed by the blood of the Lamb. So we can see the clear liturgical connection between the collect prayer, the second reading, and the gospel lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. Who is this brave shepherd? The Lamb of God, who bravely was atoned, shedding his blood for our salvation. He bravely died first, and martyrs have bravely followed, being able now to praise the Lord forever. Why are we asking our Father that we can reach that same heaven, if necessary, offering our lives as bravely as the brave shepherd and as bravely as martyrs did? This is how the message of the gospel becomes true. I give my sheep eternal life. What does the word of God tell you today in your personal life? That is something you need to discern in prayer. But understanding the message of these readings what you discern will be close to the truth. As you may see, it is important to know how to liturgically read the Word of God in order to fully grasp its meaning. Until next time, be passionate about our faith.